Hello, welcome everyone to our November edition of the SAP Enterprise Product Development Webinar to discover SAP product lifecycle management in the cloud. I hope you all have been having a good day and it's been it's early morning in few uh, geographic locations that we are having our registration uh, registered users from and of course we have some users who are joining us from the Western side, it's quite early for them. Thank you for joining us today. I hope we are able to have a really interesting agenda, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, topic to showcase for you. To start off with, of course, I, we would want to start with a little pulse check of what kind of an audience we have and how is our audience doing today. So please feel free to use the link in the chat, uh, the link provided in the chat to join us in our Mentimeter and let us know how are you doing today. I'll quickly pull up the results onto the screen. And for your ease, I'll also, oh, I, I see we are already getting some responses. We have Curious, we have Great, we have Monday, of course. We bring our uh, November edition of this webinar to you on this Monday morning. Quite okay, not too bad. So we are getting excited from the weekend. So we are. We hope that your weekend energy is able to, uh, you know, go through the week, and uh, our event is able to provide you that extra boost that you need to, like, you know, get started in the week. Okay. In the second, in the same Mentimeter, you would be, you would have been prompted a second question. This is just to know what kind of an audience that we are having in the mix of the. Uh, 90 odd participants or attendees that we have dialed in today. So uh, you have three statements in front of you. I have already worked with EPD. I'll start working with EPD soon and I'm not yet working with EPD. So let's see how many of our, what's the composition of our 94 something uh, attendees who have joined us uh, at this point of time. I do see only 21 of our participants have responded. Just to reiterate, the link to this particular mentee can be found in the chat. You could also go to mentimeter.com and use the code 61180763 to join us and let us know what's your uh, which statement uh, applies to you the most. Okay, so it's an interesting uh, split of audience that, I, that you see. We have 39% of our audience who is uh, who have not yet, 40% of our audience who have not yet worked with PPD. And we do have the second, like, you know, top uh, attendees having working with EPD and a quite substantial amount of our audience who is getting started to work with EPD. Would be interesting to roll out our 20, uh, the November release content to you with the innovation management, configuration management, and specification management. We also have some uh, guest speakers for you. So let me take, uh, take a moment and introduce our speakers of the day. So of course, uh, I'm Yash Agrawal. I work with the PLM Cloud Acceleration team to work for this event. We have Ismail and Karsten from our product management and development head. We'll have our area product owners and subject matter expert Ingamari showcasing innovation management. We have our area product owner and subject matter expert Martin, who would be showcasing configuration management. We have Felix, our area product owner and subject matter expert for specification management. And Nick is going to bring us the story of visualization of design to service. From our guest speakers, we have from Senate AG, uh, Mr. Frank and Mr. Bastion, who's going to share with us how, how partners are using uh, the enterprise product development applications and deducing time to code. And from ASM, we have Mr. Peter, who would be sharing with us how they are using the collaboration and the uh, PPX features of the enterprise product development. Before we get into these topics, it's very important for uh, all of us in the audience here, because you are interested in the enterprise product development topic, to be also aware of the different assets that are provided out there and different communication channels that you can basically go to for finding information about enterprise product development. So I'd like to take a moment and share with you that we have a community page, which is uh, which you can subscribe to or which you can follow on the SAP community that uh, helps you get the latest and greatest information right in your email subscription according to the notification setting that you may have. So let me quickly play this video for you. 
What is the SAP Community for SAP Enterprise Product Development about? How do I be a part of the community? Did you know that SAP Enterprise Product Development, or EPD for short, has a SAP Community page for anyone to find answers and experts, share experiences and ideas, build relationships and reputation, as well as learn new skills and find additional resources. Welcome to the SAP Enterprise Product Development SAP Community page. Become a part of our community for EPD by following our tag. Do you have a question about SAP Enterprise Product Development? Ask your question on the community and be sure that an expert will answer your question. Did you recently discover new tips and tricks on setting up your EPD account or have some insights that you would like to share with the community? Write a blog to share your insights in the ecosystem so that everyone can learn and benefit. Our latest and upcoming events are posted right on the top, ready for you to check what the event is about, and you can directly register if you are interested in participating in events about SAP Enterprise Product Development. Featured content changes up frequently, ensuring that our community always gains the latest news, insights, and information. If you are new to EPD, the Getting Started area will be of interest to you. Find additional links on the side. This includes a product overview on SAP.com. Find out what features are already available and what is upcoming on the SAP Roadmap Explorer. Continuous innovation within EPD is important to SAP to ensure we provide you the best solution in the market, allowing you to run your business at your best. Therefore, we have set up a place where you, our community, can influence our roadmap and pitch in your ideas on new features of the solution. The latest video is also shared for you to get to know the solution in more detail. A quick link to the SAP store provides you an overview of the plans, pricing, and reviews of the solution. You can also get a free trial and test if it fits your company's needs. SAP documentation provides you quick links to the SAP help portal for EPD, including topics like discover, what's new, implement, integrate, use, and develop. Switching to the community content tab, you can find all the content that is available on the SAP community for SAP enterprise product development. Quickly filter by blog posts or Q&A. Do you want to know more about SAP community in general? We have linked a YouTube playlist in the description. What are you waiting for? Join the community today by signing up to the SAP community and hit the follow button to gain the latest news on SAP Enterprise product development. So if you have not yet uh, followed our page on the SAP community page, we highly recommend please use the link in the chat to follow us and get our latest and greatest information and subscribe to the YouTube playlist that we have in the description of the community. With that, let's we'll quickly move on to, we'll start with our presentation and I'd like to invite to stage Ismail and Karsten to please take us through uh, the 2211 20 uh, updates from Enterprise Product Development. Over to you. Yash, yes, Yash, thank you so much uh, for opening the event uh, today. So let me quickly share my screen. And uh, Yash, if you could confirm, uh, that would be fantastic. Um, yes. And um, let me maybe also just repeat about the SAP um, Enterprise Product Development Community page, right? I believe this is a very important channel for us in product development to stay in touch uh, with um, our EPD customers, but also stay in touch with, with uh, the people who implement the solution, who configure the solution, but on the other hand side, also with all the end users who are using SAP Enterprise Product Development. And as we see a significant uptake, both in terms of adoption numbers, so meaning number of customers, but also number of users uh, using our enterprise product development application, 
we felt now there's a right time to um, uh, promote uh, these type of channels more and more with uh, the key objective to stay in touch with you, right? And uh, so I invite you as well, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, if you want to share um, something, please also feel free to write a blog post um, about, about your experience uh, using um, SAP Enterprise Product Development going forward. Okay. And we will also share a link to the video uh, because we realized there were some resolution problems. Uh, but again, we'll, we, we, we cover you uh, and share, share a video link um, to that file as well. Um, so uh, why are we sitting here today? Our mission at SAP in the PLM um, organization is to enable our customers to deliver uh, the right product at the right time, at the right cost. Okay? Deliver the right product at the right time, at the right cost. That is basically our North Star goal for our customers. And we want to, in the session today, we want to provide color to this one sentence, right? And where we want to do that, right? Uh, we, uh, in today's session, we will show how SAP Enterprise Product Development is enabling companies, uh, both in the discrete side, but also in process industries, right? So this is very important. So the session today covers both industry segments, and we will basically always uh, look into how um, SAP Enterprise Product Development will add value uh, in these two industry segments. And when we talk about developing the right products and delivering the right products, it is, I think, in everybody's mind that the uh, world out there is getting more and more complex. And our, or us as end customers, we expect when we buy products, right? We expect that the products we are buying are often configurable, right? And have an excellent quality. But these two, these, these two uh, characteristics of a right product, right? Could put big pressure on um, the entire uh, value chain when we look into the design to operate value chain, right? And we will talk about that, what that means a bit more in detail. On the other hand side, uh, customers expect the right products today, right? So they want to maybe configure something, right? And they want to um, have they want to have access to this product as soon as possible, right? So they expect that short lead times. And uh, on the other hand side, right, we also uh, aware that when you run a, a configure to order type of process or a configure to order plus type of process, right, uh, that our customers also face uh, the pressure of constantly changing the product itself or uh, changing the respective uh, configurations during uh, the sales cycle, right? Um, and this constant change basically puts a big pressure again on the entire value chain. And like I said, uh, right product, right time, but also at the right cost. And as products in both industry segments are getting more and more complex, right? Because, uh, because of new customer requirements, maybe because of a regulatory compliance, um, right? Uh, and uh, maybe because of um, uh, problems in the supply chain, right? Delivering at the right cost in a high inflationary environment also gets more and more difficult, okay? Um, and at the same time, more and more end consumers, again, in both discrete, uh, industry segments, expect um, uh, sustainable products, right? So they want to understand uh, what type of materials are used when you pr pr manufacture a product. Where is it manufactured? Uh, what is the CO2 footprint, right? And all of these factors, they drive into the cost um, uh, when you basically develop new products. And, um, and again, this is basically, these are the core challenges uh, we, um, from a PLM perspective, want to address with our uh, product lifecycle management strategy. Uh, delivering this vision uh, requires, from our perspective, a, a PLM solution, uh, which is tightly integrated, tightly integrated with an ERP system, but also with supply chain management systems. And by connecting ERP with PLM and supply chain solutions, like, for example, with manufacturing or procurement systems, right? Uh, we are able to deliver this mission, right? Enabling our customers to deliver right products, right time, um, at the right cost. Because only an integrated business process uh, will enable us to um, achieve um, this, uh, as ha help our customers to achieve the strategic mission, right? And to translate that, right? 
We are developing a digital thread that ties everything together, PLM, ERP, and the supply chain um, systems. So with that, um, I would like to again, uh, kind of now uh, also have um, um, invite Carsten now to maybe also share his perspective. So Carsten, can you, um, from your perspective, explain what the digital threat is from your perspective um, is all about? Um, and um, when you answer this question, can you also answer why the cloud as an uh, deployment model uh, plays, in, um, plays a more important role uh, going forward um, when developing that digital threat? Okay, let me let me try to answer this question, Ismail. And a while ago in a coffee corner session, I was asked from a colleague, what is the biggest value which PLM provides to our customers? I think everyone has an understanding what is manufacturing doing, what is what is supply chain doing. But when it comes to PLM, you think about what is the biggest value, you know some functions, but what is the biggest value? And in the end, for me, it's the product data which PLM provides, but not only the product data, which has a foundation for everything, it's their reuse. Yeah. So think about get starts with get fuels. Very easy, very, very easy example. They are reused in work instructions, they are reused in service. Yeah. But basically, they're also the base for the document bill of material, for the engineering bill of material. When you do a handover to manufacturing, you link both together, engineering and manufacturing. When you hand it over from manufacturing to service, you link manufacturing with service. And now comes the second piece, which makes this value even more tangible for me. It's a consistent change management process. Yeah. So this change management process as a core PLM function basically ties product development and all downstream processes together. Another example would be a specification which is said as a DNA of the material. And I think if you go through the slide a little bit more, then I think exactly. So if you think about a specification, it's nicely reflected by this icon, let's say it's a DNA of the material. And this DNA of the material describe, describes what makes this material for you important. And of course, those data are reused in compliance, sustainability. Think about things like CO2 footprint. But the specification is also the base for the cost. It's also the base for the recipes, depending on the industry. And if it changes, and if it changes through so a change management process, then of course, all the dependencies change as well. And this is for me what, what makes a digital threat and how PLM as a core function basically enables this digital, threat, this digital threat. And now comes the question, why does a cloud solution like EBD help in achieving, achieving this vision? If you look at your own landscape, most likely there's not a single system. I mean, and I wished it were, which hosts all those functionalities. So basically you have to link multiple systems together. And I think here, a cloud solution with a, with a modern architecture, with modern APIs makes this easier than it was in the past. And the cloud solution also makes it much more easier to react to frequent changes, to react to new requirements. Which is um, then, then an older on-premise solution, which had release cycles uh, where you had where you could not react so fast on those dependencies. And um, this is for me the answer to what is a digital threat, how PLM contributes, and um, how cloud as a deployment model supports this or makes it easier to achieve this vision. So, Ismail, could I answer your question? Yes, absolutely, Carsten. So, um, and again, right, and this is uh, uh, the the key red thread for today's session, right? We will always uh, come back um, to the idea of showing how our business processes in PLM um, integrate also with other downstream applications uh, so that we can create that in integrated end-to-end -end, um, business process with all, of, all the objects Carsten explained. Uh, uh, in uh, basically with SAP Enterprise Product Development, okay?